Okay, today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to try and develop my own film at home. Here I've got a two bath process from Cine Still. Basically it comes in two baths. We have a bath one which is the developer and a two part bleach and fix. Uh, so you mix these separately but they end up being one liquid. It will make one litre which luckily is the size of this glass bottle here. Let's just go through some of the things that I've got in preparation for what we're about to do today. So we have a changing bag. We have a thermometer which will tell us how hot the water is. Next we have a developing tank which can fit two reels of 35 millimeter film. Here are the films that we're going to be developing. So let, without further ado, let's just jump on into this uh, process. Place 600 to 700 milliliters of water into a clean glass or plastic pitcher. Luckily, we have a plastic pitcher right here, ready to go. 250, 500, 100, going in the tank. All right, so now we have 600 milliliters of that water. Use a clean plastic stick or the TCS 1000. I have neither. Okay, here we go, we're in. Now kids, don't sniff this stuff. <coughs> okay, there we go. That's ugly, I wonder if it's supposed to be that color. And we'll get 200 mils here, that's that. And then 100 mils to finish off the job. <coughs> Bless you, Sean. Here we go, home chemistry. That looks pretty good, guys, right? Take a look at that. That looks like when you come home from a weekend long shoot at Mount Bundy and you wash your feet for the first time. <laughs> I'd say that's good to go. I've just forgotten the funnels and um, gloves which I was supposed to wear from the start. So I'll be right back. All right, safety mode activated. Also fun tip, um, and hopefully I can just have a little box of information come up here, but if you accidentally get a little bit of the developer in the Blix, it's no problem. But if you get a little bit of the Blix in the developer, it ruins the entire developer. Okay, beautiful. We're gonna put a cap on that and we're gonna move on to the second bath, which is a part A and part B Blix. Let's take off these goggles because it is hot. Okay, that's 700 milliliters. Oh, that's hot. Part A contains ammonium sulfate. Don't worry about that. Also, you might be wondering why I don't have a knife and why I'm using this a can opener or this bottle opener. In order to open the film, bottle openers make that a lot easier. You don't want to be tearing back your fingernails in the dark. Part A. It's just fizzing a little bit like a Barocca. What? I just smelled that. <laughs> that smells like pool chlorine. But hang on, endothermic reaction. Does that mean explodey time? I guess we're about to find out. Get ready, endothermic reaction. Then that man is here. This powder's yellow. I haven't been showing you the powders as we've gone, but this looks like something you'd buy in a greenie store. You'd mix in with your milkshake. That looks good. Stand back, Sean. An endothermic reaction is about to happen. Oh my gosh, that's just turned the whole thing really nasty poo brown, hasn't it? Oh, that is stinky. I mean, not awfully stinky for the people at home who are just watching this. Just think of something that's mildly unpleasant. It's not that bad. It sort of smells a little bit like mild blood and bones for all of you green thumbs out there. If you're interested in the sort of smell, it's more, it's like a chemical version of blood and bones. Oh no. <laughs> okay, we might have slightly overdone it with the milliliters. I should hold this up for this demonstration. This will be when I drop both bottles, not only. <coughs> Bless you. <laughs> You can get many different kinds of developing tanks, but this tank is called a Patterson tank. This particular tank has two reels on it, two reels that'll fit at 235 millimeter or 135 film, or you can actually extend these. There's a locking mechanism there. So that's 120 film if you're interested. If you're someone who shoots medium format film, there's 120 film. But we are shooting two rolls of 35. So we'll start with one. And because I don't trust myself yet with this process, I'm only going to use one reel. 
the next process requires you to do this completely in the dark. Now I don't mean in a dark room, I mean in pitch black darkness because the tiniest bit of light will flood the, the film inside and destroy the film. So uh, in order to prevent that, you do it in the dark. But basically what you do is you, you, you pop this off using a can opener, or you can use your fingernails if you're strong enough. If you wanna know how to do this, just Google Patterson tank loading system. You have to put the film on here and this system will automatically wind it on using a clever contraption that uses some ball bearings and a little clip and stuff like that. And basically you have to do this completely in the dark, but it'll wind the film on just by doing that. Now there can be jams and I've done this with an exposed roll of film. If you're feeling unsure, what you can do is just buy a really cheap roll of film, pull it out so it's completely exposed and then just test it. Just test it with a, with a spoiled piece of film and just get that action down pat. So you won't see any of this, but when we come back, I'll have loaded the film onto here and I would have popped it into the tank. And keep in mind, you have to put this second bit on so there's no light can get in, like so, and we'll be ready to go with our developer. Oh, oh, okay, have a look in the changing bag. I used a changing bag because the room in which I was in wasn't total darkness. It was very dark, but it wasn't total darkness. You really want to eliminate any light that whatsoever. So in there we had the can opener. We, this is, these are the remains of the uh, film canister which had the film in it. I also have the scissors, here we go, the scissors that Sean saved my life with. I've heard a lot of people talk about pre-washing a film with water. I'm going to try doing it. For this whole process we want 38 degrees. Every part of the process is time sensitive. I just opened up the calculator instead of the clock. 41, yeah that's good enough. 37, 39. 40, all right. And then we just use this agitator to agitate the film slightly. Optional pre-soak, one minute. Agitation, none. Well, I agitated it. Okay, all right, so for the developer, it's three and a half minutes at 39 degrees. Let's just see what temperature these are. 36, all right, let's, let's just put it in the hot water for a little bit longer. Step three, bleach and fix. Eight minutes at 24 to 48. Now let's give that a few inversions. Mix it all up. Okay, you ready? Do I start? Yep. Okay, very good. So for the first 10 seconds, I believe I have to be doing continuous agitation. Tap it, and I believe it's to get air bubbles out, but I could be wrong. On a minute, I'm going to do four agitations. All right, one minute 30. Now let's give it another four agitations. One, two. So for the next one, I'm going to do inversions, which just means, means flipping it upside down. One, two, three, four. All right, we're on the last stretch. We're at three minutes. I better be ready with this. All right, we're just past three minutes and 30 seconds. I'm now going to put the chemicals back into their container. And now we're just going to skirt over to see how our Blix is doing. Can you reset that timer? And, and action. <laughs> Agitate it. Great, so this one's gone for eight minutes. So we've got a little bit of a trick with this one. But as you can see, I haven't even used the full bottle. So this is getting exciting. This is the last leg of our journey before we have to put in the distilled water. Oh, and... You know what I am gonna do? Just one inversion. Just to make sure that it's all in there. You could almost watch two episodes of Clive the way this is going. Also, just one more tip I might bring up. I was wearing a watch before I put, uh, put my hands in the changing bag, but it is not a good idea to wear a watch in the changing bag because it get, just gets caught a lot. Just remember that you do need a bottle opener or some sort of tool to open the film canister. You need a pair of scissors or a knife, if you know what you're doing, to cut off the tail end of the film. Uh, and you also need the reel, of course, so. All right, we're at six minutes 30. All right, we're almost at the end, children. Seven minutes. Do you want a cup of distilled water, Sean? <laughs> yes. Just kidding, have a cup of bleach. Seven, 50, nine, eight minutes. All right, let's pour this bad boy back out. 
you should still definitely do a water rinse afterwards to get all that chemical off. Didn't even put that much in. Here's the moment of truth. If we've done everything correctly, we should be able to see pictures. Brown, sort of dark, but if you hold them up to the light, pictures. Here we go. So there you go, there's the torn perforations I was talking about. It looks like it's torn more than just the perforations. It looks like the actual film has just torn really badly. All right, now that happened in camera, not in the development process. Well, not that that changes anything. I still did that. Anyway. Wow. And would you look at that, ladies and gentlemen. Hold that up to the light, Sean, see if you can get some sort of, is it too bright or? It might be oh, bright. actually, you know, you can see, you can see pretty well. Right about now, I'll put in some examples of how these look once they're all scanned and, and jazzed up a little bit. Just need to wipe the water off it. You want to be careful not to scratch the emulsion because that is your photo. Right, so there you go everybody. This is, that's how easy it is to actually just develop your own film. I think if you're into film photography, you, de you, could, you, could, you should definitely give it a shot uh, just because it is a process that we often miss out on. Uh, if you're like me, then you would have often given it to a lab just to do the development process for you. But if you've got a few rolls lying around um, and you want to do it yourself, I'd say test it with a roll that you're not super precious on first just to make sure that it's turning out okay and then give it a shot for yourself. I think that's it. Here's my first roll of film. As you can see, the photos have turned out pretty good.